in this video, we're going to tackle inequalities and we're going to deal with four different equations, linear, quadratics, absolute value, and rational functions. Now, the linear is the easiest one. So here, you just deal with it algebraically and you treat the inequality sign as if it was an equal sign. So I'm going to move the negative 3x to this side becomes positive. I'm going to move the negative two to the side. It becomes positive as well, because since they are negative on the other side. So here we're going to have four X plus three X is greater than 12. Moving the negative two to the other side becomes plus two. Now that's seven X is greater than 14. Divide both sides by seven by seven. And therefore X is greater than or equal. Sorry, just greater than two. I'm going to put that on the number line. There's the zero there. Two is somewhere around here. You put an open circle since there's no equal sign with the inequality sign. Greater than is this side and you shade this region right here. Okay. Now let's go to the second one. It's a quadratic. The best way to do this is move the 10 to the other side. So you'll have x squared minus 3x minus 10. When you move the 10 to the other side, it becomes negative. It's less than or equal to 0. At this stage here, you want to factor this. So you'll have x minus 5, x plus 2. Two numbers multiply to give you negative 10 and add to give you negative 3. These are the factors less than or equal to zero. Best thing after this is to draw a number line. Throw in your zeros here, which is x equals five and x equals negative two. So here's the negative two somewhere in here and the five is somewhere in here. Okay. Now, if you look at this line, or number line is divided into three segments, this one here, this one, and this one. So what you wanna do, you're gonna take a number in each segment and test it into here. So let's say we're gonna take negative three or negative four or negative five, stick to smaller numbers. So I'm gonna stick to negative three here. So if I put negative three into this equation right here, minus five and negative three plus two is less than or equal to zero. That gives me negative eight and that gives me multiplication negative one negative eight times negative one is positive eight is less than, is that less than or equal to zero? Definitely not. So that's false. We don't shade in there. Okay. Let's take another uh, a number in the other line segment here. So between negative two and five, best number to test here is zero. You could test negative one, one, two, three, four, but zero is easier to work with because if you put in zero in here or the X in here and the X here, you just end up with negative five times two when you're testing zero and that gives you negative 10, which definitely is less than or equal to zero. So since it's true, you shade in here. Let's take a number in here, let's take six. So if we test six, six minus five times six plus two is less than or equal to zero. That's one, that's eight. One times eight is eight. Is that less than or equal to zero? Definitely not. So therefore, it's false and we don't shade in here. And you have to write your solution. So therefore your solution X is shaded between um, negative two and five. One mistake or one thing I forgot to do here is because there is an equal sign with the inequality sign, these numbers should be shaded. So I forgot to do that. And also when you write your inequality, since they're shaded then you know there's an equal sign with the inequality. So this indicates that X is shaded between negative two and five, which means any number between negative two and five, if you sub it in the X here, it will give you a true statement. So you take any number, uh, negative 1.5, negative 0.1, zero. As long as it's between negative two and five, this statement will be true. Okay, now let's go to the next thing. And the next thing here is absolute value. So there are a few things we're gonna do here. First thing, we're gonna move the three to the other side. So we're gonna have X minus two, absolute value. When I move the three to the other side it becomes minus three. So that's what we have. And therefore X minus two 
is greater than or equal to six. Now I'm gonna take the absolute value on the side here, which is the X minus two absolute value and just treat it as if it equals six, okay? And you know, when we're solving absolute values, we do two conditions where we write X minus two must equal two or So I just notice it's six, not two. So six equals six, it's right here. And then, so basically what I did, I, I just took this instead of inequality sign, I just put an equal sign. I wanna solve and find out what my zeros are. Okay, and therefore the other condition is X minus two, but you make it equal negative six. Now this will give you X equals eight, and this will give you X equals Negative six plus two is negative four. Now we do the number line. Put in my zeros, which is the negative four. And again, since we have an equal sign, it should be shaded. And the eight, not drawn to scale, but you know what I'm talking about. Eight here. Now you test. This stage, you have three segments here to this line. Test in each, each segment. So take negative five here. If I take negative five, I go negative five minus two, absolute valued. That's negative seven and the absolute value of negative seven is positive seven, is that greater than or equal to zero? Sorry, is that greater than or equal to six? Definitely yes, so I'm gonna shade in here. Now let's take a number in here. The best number is between negative one and eight to test is zero because that's easy. Then you just put in the zero there, zero minus two just gives you negative two, absolute value is greater than or equal to six. The absolute value of negative two is two, it's greater than or equal to six, that's definitely false so you don't shade only shade if it's true. Now let's take a number in here. So we're gonna take nine or 10, I'm just gonna take nine. Nine minus two, absolute value is greater than or equal to six. And that's gonna give me seven is greater than or equal to six. Definitely true, so you shade in here. And therefore you write your statement as X okay, is less than or equal to negative four, or X has to be greater than or equal to eight, and that's your final answer. Now, the hardest one for last. So here, what are we gonna do with this one? With this one, I'm gonna take this here and start factoring the top. So I'm gonna have X minus four, X plus, Three, that's what, how I factor this. Two numbers multiply to give me negative 12 and add to give me negative one. There's a one here. That's negative four and three. All over, x plus two. Again, I'm not gonna write an inequality sign. I'm just gonna write equals zero and solve this. Now, when we're dealing with inequalities, we know we have a non-permissible value. So my non-permissible value is x cannot equal negative two because we cannot divide by zero and negative two will make the bottom zero. Okay, so that's one thing when you're doing your number line, definitely you have to include the non-permissible value in your number line. So, and it has to be, even though this less than or equal, you don't you don't, you don't shade this because this is non-permissible. Non so you don't shade that one. That's just the value that you cannot have because you cannot divide by. Now, let's solve this. To solve this, I cross multiply the x plus two into the zero. So basically it gives me x minus four, x plus three equals zero. Now I could see what my zeros are right away, which is x equals negative three and four. I'm gonna put these right here. So negative three is right here and four is right here. There's an equal sign there. So the negative three and four, they must be shaded but not, not the non-permissible value, okay. So now here we have one, two, three, four line segments that I have to test in here, okay, um, or in there. Maybe maybe test it, like when you're testing, use the X minus four, X plus three over X plus two. It's easier to deal with the factored form because when you start subbing in numbers, it's easier to see. So here, um, or easier to calculate. So negative, we're gonna use negative four here. So if I use negative four in this line segments, I put in negative four minus four 
and negative 4 plus 3 over negative 4 plus 2. As you see, that's going to be negative 8 times negative 1 over negative 2. Negative 8 times negative 1 is 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. Is that less than or equal to 0? Definitely, it is. That's a true statement, so I'm going to shade in here. Now, let's take a number in here. Unfortunately, we have to deal with decimals in here. So if I take a number in here, I'm going to put in negative 3.5. Negative 3.5. No, negative 3.5 is on this side. So I meant negative 2.5. Minus 4. Uh, negative 2.5 plus three and negative 2.5 plus two. Now, sometimes it's a it's good idea to find out that this here will end up being a negative number. Yeah. This here will end up being a positive number because negative 2.5 plus three is positive. And in here, negative 2.5 plus two ends up being negative. So not negative, okay? So just negative. Don't worry about what the numbers are. Now, negative times positive on top is negative, and then negative divided by negative, you end up with positive number. Is positive number less than or equal to zero? No, it's not. It has to be a negative number to be less than or equal to zero, so therefore you don't shade there. So that's why we only deal with the signs. You don't even have to calculate the whole thing with the numbers, even when you're testing in here. So if we sub in zero here, if we sub in zero, zero minus four is negative four, so that's gonna be negative. 0 plus 3 is 3, so that's going to be positive. And 0 plus 2 is positive, because it's positive, so it's positive. Now, negative times positive is negative. Negative divided by positive is negative. Is a negative number less than or equal to 0? Definitely. So therefore, this is true, and therefore you shade in this region where 0 is. Okay. Now, let's take a number here. Let's take 5. If I take 5, and I'm just going to, 5 minus 4 is positive. 5 plus 8 is positive, 5 plus 2 is positive. So now positive times positive, positive divided by positive is positive, so you end up with a positive number. Is that less than or equal to zero? No, a positive number will never be less than zero, so therefore it's false and I don't shave there. Now, my solution is x is less than or equal to negative three, or x is in between negative two, and make sure you don't put an equal sign because it's an open circle, and four. And that is how you deal with those different types of functions when, you, when, you, when it comes to inequalities. Thanks for watching. See you next time.